So here is the Tau Tau Thunder 50. As you can see, it's a little messed up. It used to have these cool plastics that went here. You know, it was really nice. So we'll get back to that later and how the scooter got to be in that condition. But here you can see me unboxing it and we'll go through all that. I purchased it in August of 2015, brand new for $823. Here you can see the front rim, disc brakes, it's the 12 inch rims. So the scooter comes mostly assembled, but you have to put some of the basic parts together. Here you can see me taking the front headlights, the way it ships they were tucked in the back of the scooter in the crate. There's the front nose piece. So what caught my eye about the scooter is this right here. The Type R symbol is pretty much the same font as the R32, which you can see here on the upper left. So I pretty much knew this was the scooter for me. So here's the trunk that goes with it. It's got the keys to lock it. And these aren't really lights, they're just reflectors. And once I open the trunk, there's the front fender that goes over the front wheel. A couple of reflectors on the side of that. And then there's some brackets and hardware inside the trunk that you use to mount the trunk on the back of the scooter. I didn't really use the trunk once I got it assembled. It kind of bounced around a lot. Once you get it out of the crate, you can get the handlebars, the front wheel, and the nose on with the headlights. You have to change the oil because it comes with shipping oil. And I also changed the gear oil. This is just a quick walk around view of it. This was when it was pretty new. I think right after the first oil change. Here you can see the LED lights on the front. They're like a running light. They're pretty bright. And with the speedometer, if you look at these numbers on the outside, the large numbers, those are kilometers per hour. You have to look inside at the yellow numbers for miles per hour. It has storage in the seat. That's where I keep the paperwork and some extra tools. The trunk never really stayed latched. If you hit a bump, it would flex and because it's cheap plastic, it would come unlatched. I kept a sweatshirt in there, but I never really put anything in there. The bracket ended up breaking off where it bolts under the fender. So it's not really fixable and I just stopped using it. There's plenty of storage in the seat and then in that little cup holder under the key there. Here you can see the blinkers and the lights outside when it's about to get dark. The individual LEDs. and LED blinkers. And then it has the electric start or the kick start. And once you get it started, the headlight comes on. So then you could change from low beam to high beam.
Now I'll take you guys for a quick ride on it. I was just holding the GoPro with my left hand, so all this riding was just one hand. You can pretty much just hold it wide open. And that's really not 60 miles per hour. It's about 35. It has miles per hour and little numbers on the inside. If you can see on the speedometer, it says miles in yellow. So that means the yellow numbers are miles. And where it says KMH in white on the lower left of the needle, indicating that the larger numbers are kilometers. I know some people say that they're going like 65, but really they're not. And again, wide open. So now it's way past the last numbers and you're over towards the blinkers, between the blinkers and the high beams. It's about 40 miles an hour. It was pretty fast. The only real complaint was the trunk that broke, which wasn't a big deal. So how did it get to be in this condition? Well, I bought it in August for 800 like I said, rode it all summer, sold it in November for 600 and the new owner owned it for, you know, a month and a half and then hit a curb, ruining the front rim, all these plastics. Keep in mind, the speedometer tells you in kilometers, but it was 2357 kilometers when I sold it, and now it has 2792 which is about 250 miles more. Look, all this is broken. The key is stuck in the ignition. Big dent there. Another dent here. And the exhaust is bent so much that I can't get the dipstick out to check the oil. So I can't tell what else is bent. Around to this side, handles bent, blinkers gone, that LED's busted, this whole front piece is broken, the forks are bent backwards, Listen. it's tough to see but if you can see the bearing right there, it's bent out. You can see they should be tilted forward more. Right now the fender hits the wheel or frame right here. And it won't turn right. So I ordered a new rim, but I'm going to have to figure it out and see what's wrong with it. See if I can fix this one. I'm going to take this fender off and see what else is bent.